Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing Lord Voldemort and all of his Horcruxes. As a known proponent of dark magic, Tom Riddle began experimenting with the dark arts at a very young age. In the film adaptation of The Half-Blood Prince, the pensive reveals one of Dumbledore's most important memories, which takes us all the way back to the year 1938. Dumbledore is shown visiting a very troubled looking boy, sitting alone in the room of an orphanage. During Dumbledore's visit to the orphanage, he reveals to the boy that he is a wizard, and subsequently shows him an impressive display of magical ability. Riddle is in awe, and shortly after this moment, Dumbledore invites him to Hogwarts. Tom Riddle was of course a terrifying, hostile child who tormented the other orphans, but this was not something that Dumbledore knew about until later on. After Riddle began attending the school, Dumbledore researched Riddle and became more familiar with his existence. However, he was still mostly unaware of the true potential of his dark nature. After Harry is finished with the pensive, he has the following exchange with Dumbledore. Did you know, sir? Then? Did I know that I had just met the most dangerous dark wizard of all time? No. After spending some time at Hogwarts, a young Tom Riddle would eventually come to befriend Professor Horace Slughorn, his then potions professor. Slughorn had a tendency to choose favourites from his classes and he had a keen eye for identifying if someone would go on to achieve greatness in some capacity, and would always take great pride in their accomplishments. Tom Riddle, like Harry Potter, would go on to become one of Slughorn's absolute favourites. While a student at Hogwarts, Riddle was a very impressive student who expressed an unparalleled ability to learn. There is one particular branch of magic, however, that Riddle may have learned a little bit too much about, it has been expressed that Slughorn was responsible for providing Riddle with information on Horcruxes, the same form of dark magic that was instrumental in Voldemort's rise to power. Slughorn served head of Slytherin House during his time at the school, but retired in the year 1981 out of fear that Albus Dumbledore would discover that he had told Tom Riddle about these Horcruxes, a rather taboo subject that should have never been discussed at all. Slughorn claimed ignorance for years, expressing that he had never told Riddle anything of the sort, even going as far as to tamper with his own memories so that the truth would never be revealed. However, the truth did eventually come out, and it was shown that Slughorn had given Riddle perhaps a little bit too much information on this extremely sinister form of dark magic. If you don't know what a Horcrux is already, well, you should, but for the sake of the video, we'll briefly introduce the subject anyway. A horcrux is an object in which a dark witch or wizard has imbued part of their soul. The ultimate purpose of creating a horcrux is to achieve immortality. However, the truly sinister component of creating a horcrux is that in order to produce one, you must murder someone. There are only two known wizards who have created a horcrux, the first being Herpo the Fowl, and the second being Voldemort, who produced many. Voldemort's first horcrux is the Diary of Tom Riddle, this was of course created after Voldemort murdered Moaning Myrtle in 1943. The second Horcrux is Helga Hufflepuff's Cup, which was created after the death of Hepzibah Smith sometime after 1946. Hepzibah was mercilessly killed by Voldemort when he spiked her cocoa with poison. The third Horcrux is Salazar Slytherin's Locket, which was created after Voldemort murdered a Muggle Tramp. The fourth Horcrux is Nagini, who became a Horcrux after the death of Bertha Jorkins. The fifth Horcrux is Marvolo Gaunt's Ring, which was produced after Voldemort murdered his own father, Tom Riddle Sr., in 1943. The sixth Horcrux is Rowena Ravenclaw's Diadem, which was produced after Voldemort killed an Albanian peasant sometime after 1946. And Voldemort's seventh Horcrux was of course Harry Potter, who became a Horcrux after Voldemort's failed murder attempt. While the creation of Horcruxes is commonly associated with immortality, technically you aren't completely immortal, because a horcrux can be destroyed. So long as the horcruxes remain, you're safe, but in the case of Voldemort, his horcruxes dropped off like flies after Harry Potter and gang discovered what they needed to do in order to destroy him. Commonly, horcruxes are protected with counter charms and jinxes. This can make it difficult to even approach them. But if you are fortunate enough to circumvent these jinxes and counter charms, you can actually destroy them. Here are some of the confirmed methods. Basilisk Fangs In the books and films, the fabled Basilisk Fang is used to destroy a couple of Voldemort's Horcruxes, including Hufflepuff's Cup and Tom Riddle's Diary. This is because the Basilisk's Fang contains Basilisk Venom, the true destructive agent that is capable of taking down a Horcrux. 
At one point, Harry uses Godric Gryffindor's sword to cut the roof of the basilisk's mouth, imbuing the sword with basilisk's venom. It was for this reason that the same sword was able to destroy Marvolo Gaunt's ring and Salazar Slytherin's locket. Fiendfire Fiendfire is a form of advanced dark magic, a curse that produces enchanted flames of immense size and heat. Fiendfire destroys anyone and anything in its path, and it assumes the form of gigantic fiery beasts, like serpents, chimeras, and dragons. Fiendfire can destroy anything, and is responsible for destroying Rowena Ravenclaw's diadem. In the Room of Requirement inside of Hogwarts, the diadem was kicked into Vincent Crabbe's unintentional Fiendfire. And we also have the Killing Curse, Avada Kedavra. It's one of the unforgivable curses and was used by Voldemort to destroy the Horcrux inside of Harry. However the destruction of the Horcrux is achieved, one thing is massively important, and that is that the Horcrux is beyond magical reconstitution. It isn't possible to magically fix certain types of damage, and it just so happens the damage from Basilisk Venom, Fiendfire, and Avada Kedavra fit this criteria. We must remember that it is the container that needs to be destroyed beyond magical repair. I've always wondered, as Voldemort was aware that his Horcruxes were being destroyed, why didn't he go to any effort to create more? Surely if he was successful in creating seven of them previously, and was fully aware of the process, he could just create more, as they were destroyed. Harry knew the locations of the Horcruxes because Dumbledore had figured them out, but since Dumbledore was now dead, wouldn't it have been easy for Voldemort to create another that Harry didn't know the location of? This brings us to Voldemort's obsession with the number seven, and his belief that the number seven was of particular importance in achieving immortality in its strongest form. When Voldemort spoke with Slughorn, one of the goals of the conversation was to confirm that seven pieces of soul would make the concept of immortality through Horcruxes even more powerful. Voldemort felt that splitting his soul into more than seven pieces would somehow lessen the strength of the power. A conversation between Harry and Dumbledore supports this. Wouldn't it be better, make you stronger, to have your soul in more pieces? I mean, for instance, isn't seven the most powerfully magical number? Wouldn't seven… Yes, I think the idea of a seven-part soul would greatly appeal to Lord Voldemort. Because of this, Harry is under the impression that Voldemort would need to create seven Horcruxes, a statement which Dumbledore corrects. No, Harry, not seven Horcruxes, six. The seventh part of his soul, however maimed, resides inside his regenerated body. Because Voldemort was so fixated on the number seven, and it being the most magical number, he felt that splitting his soul into seven pieces, and only seven, would provide him the highest level of protection. He avoided creating additional Horcruxes because he felt that it would contradict this sacred number. Not only that, but we are just missing so much important information about the creation of Horcruxes. We don't know how long it takes, or how long it would take to physically recover from creating one. Perhaps, given his current position, creating an additional Horcrux would have rendered him vulnerable for too long. When Voldemort's Horcruxes were being destroyed, he recognized that he was in danger and probably felt that rendering himself in a more vulnerable state was not a good decision to make at that time. It could have been time sensitive by the time Voldemort realized he was truly in danger and needed further protection. No wizard before Voldemort was successful in creating as many Horcruxes as he did. In fact, only one other wizard ever was successful in creating a Horcrux, and that was Herpo the Fowl, who I mentioned earlier. To split your soul into seven pieces seems as though it would take a significant toll on your very existence, with each split taking more out of you than the last. The book mentions at one point that Voldemort's soul had already been torn to the limit, with his physical appearance being a representation of that, so it makes sense that he would be unable to create more. I think that seven is just the maximum number of Horcruxes that you can create, period and this would definitely explain Voldemort's obsession with that number. It would also explain why Voldemort's seventh inadvertent Horcrux destroyed him, because the creation of a seventh Horcrux meant that his soul was now split into eight, conflicting with magic number seven. Bearing all of the above in mind, we also have to remember that Voldemort was extremely arrogant. He perhaps overconfidently believed that no one would ever find all of his Horcruxes, particularly the diadem. The book Jodelo, Magique Most Evil, 
which can be found in the Hogwarts Library, was one of the only books on the dark arts that mentioned Horcruxes. However, the Horcruxes proved to be such a vile form of dark magic that even a book on dark magic didn't discuss them in much detail. An excerpt from the book reads as follows, Of the Horcrux, wickedest of magical inventions, we shall not speak nor give direction. Perhaps Voldemort, knowing that there was very little available information on Horcruxes, believed that no one would ever catch on, or figure out how to properly destroy them. Perhaps his arrogance and his false sense of security were what led to his downfall. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, you're a wizard Harry!